guys. For the Q&A today, I'm gonna answer your questions about yellow bumps around the eyes called xanthelasma. Xanthelasma is one type of skin lesion called a xanthoma. Xanthomas are these yellowish skin lesions that there are a few different subtypes, but xanthelasma is the most common xanthoma. That's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. They're these flat, firm, yellow bumps. They can be quite large and they can occur on the upper and lower eyelids. You have multiple xanthelasma and sometimes they are present asymmetrically, meaning you have one on one upper eyelid and then you've got two or three on the other side. Uh, so they kind of crop up. What causes them? Well, they're actually due to an accumulation of lipid in a cell in our skin called a macrophage. Macrophages are cells of our immune system that live in our skin too and they engulf things. Uh, they're kind of the eating cells of the immune system and sometimes they can engulf lipids and they get this foamy yellowish look. They deposit in the skin and they make these bumps called xanthomas for which xanthelasma is one type. And in a lot of people with xanthelasma have an underlying problem with their lipids. So when they check their blood lipids, they may have elevated triglycerides or abnormal cholesterol. And that may be due to a genetic predisposition to abnormal lipids or some secondary factors. And I'll get into those in a moment. But a lot of times, xanthelasma can also just occur with no underlying problem in the lipids in the blood. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have that you have problems with your with your lipids. They start out small and then they can expand and grow larger. And like I said, you can have multiple of them. And importantly, while they are a pain, while, while people don't like the way they look, and while sometimes they can herald an underlying problem with the lipids, they themselves are not dangerous. They do not go on to form any type of skin cancer. Uh, and so they, they are not dangerous. The worst thing that can happen with the xanthelasma though is it can become really big and perhaps get in the way of your vision, obstruct how your eyelid opens and closes a little bit, um, but that's not very common. They're more common in women than in men uh, and they tend to happen in adults mostly. They're, they're pretty rare to unusual in young children. Starting, starting around the age of 15 though is when we first start to see them. Unfortunately, while they can be treated, recurrence after treatment is very common. They tend to come back. For example, after, after they are cut out, about 40% of them will recur. Xanthelasma itself is not dangerous, it's not going to become a cancer, and it generally does not affect eyelid function, but it's important to rule out any underlying blood lipid abnormality with a fasting blood lipid panel. Um, one type of blood lipid abnormality may be due to a primary genetic disease that causes you to have abnormal cholesterol. But most cases, many cases, are due to secondary causes of high lipids. Secondary causes are going to be things in your diet. Eating a diet high in saturated fat um, and cholesterol is a risk factor. Also, if you consume a lot of alcohol, alcohol can definitely impact your triglycerides um, and play a role. So if you drink heavily, cutting back is really important. And if you experience rapid weight gain, that also can alter your, your lipids. Then certain medications can put you at risk for lipid abnormalities. Prednisone, for example, also uh, oral estrogen therapies, anabolic steroids like testosterone, certain antihypertensive or blood pressure medications, Retinoids. Retinoids are medications that we use in dermatology to treat acne, like, like Accutane is, is one such medication. And we also use them to treat um, psoriasis. So that medication is called psoriatane. These, these medications, they're called retinoids and they can alter your blood lipids. And then um, a medication called cyclosporin also can disrupt lipids and put you at risk for this. Tamoxifen uh, for breast cancer and one medication called simididine, and as well as some medications given for seizures can alter your, alter your lipids. So that, that may be one cause. Probably the most common secondary cause of lipid abnormalities that would be associated with xanthelasma is hypothyroidism. So having an underactive thyroid can mess up your lipid panel and put you at risk for these. And then another very common cause is uncontrolled diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes skews your lipid panel and, and messes up the metabolism of lipid in our body 
and put you at risk for these. So those are some of the secondary causes and that's really kind of the most important thing that that you want to focus on initially make sure you don't have any of that going on uh, but there are some there are some treatments that can be pursued treatment for xanthalasma first starts at addressing the lipid problem if you have it just because that's really important for your health that being said addressing the lipid problem whether it be through diet or medication does not always help the xanthalasma to go away and stay away, unfortunately. Um, so it seems as though there's not a whole lot you can do to, to reverse them occurring and coming back. Xanthalasma can be cut out by surgical excision, uh, meaning the uh, dermatologist just cuts it out and puts a suture in place to close up the, to close up the, the defect. But this is only appropriate for really small lesions of xanthalasma. If they're really big, that's not going to be ideal. The reason for this is that the scar that might form can can um, cause your eyelids to retract a little bit and interfere with your with your vision, interfere with your opening and closing your eyes, and cause problems for you. So it's only it's only appropriate for really small lesions. Um, and also, you have a risk of bleeding with with an operation like that. A less invasive approach is to use a CO2 or argon laser to resurface the the xanthalasma. Uh, this doesn't require any stitches and has low, much less bleeding, but you can uh, heal with hyperpigmentation and scarring. The third type of treatment is some sort of chemical cauterization with um, a chlorinated acetic acid, trichloroacetic acid, monoacetic acid. Uh, what this does is it dissolves the lipid and it also destroys some of the proteins in the macrophage and can help in, in resolving the resolving the, um, the xanthalasma. There's minimal scarring from this, so it's a pretty reasonable approach. And then the fourth type of treatment is going to be electrodesiccation, which is that little, that little burning tool that we use for a lot of things. That actually works really well, um, but it only works well for lesions that are more superficial. It kind of dissolves some of that lipid and helps in, helps in uh, clearing up the xanthalasma. Uh, there is some risk of scarring with that and hypopigmentation. And then liquid nitrogen therapy could also be pursued, but that's much more risky. It has a greater risk of, of healing with a scar than the, than the electrodesiccation. And the types of complications that might occur from treatment of xanthalasma include something called atropion, which is distortion of the eyelids uh, as the eyelid skin heals with, with uh, scarring. Uh, hyperpigmentation. After xanthalasma is treated, unfortunately it has a high recurrence rate. For example, after excision, 40% of xanthalasmas will recur. Your risk of recurrence after treatment is greater if you have an underlying lipid problem or if you have all four eyelids affected, meaning you have the xanthalasma on both top eyelids and both bottom eyelids. So four total on all four surfaces. That was deemed, that's, that's been shown to be a risk factor for recurrence. So those are the treatments. Again, recurrence is high, but the lesion itself is not dangerous. Uh, and more importantly, it heralds that perhaps there could be an underlying metabolic problem that you need to investigate. But fixing the metabolic problem does not really necessarily undo the xanthalasma process. And you may still be coping with them even after the lipid abnormality has been treated and resolved. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. They're really a pain to have to live with. They can really affect your self-esteem. These treatments can definitely improve the appearance of xanthalasma and hopefully keep them at bay. But again, they do recur. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.